Hey everybody, I am Vepo. Welcome back to my channel. I hope we're all doing well, staying safe, especially during this global pandemic. In the last few weeks, we have seen a significant increase in COVID cases and there has been a uh, way more variants in COVID than before. So just stay safe, you know, hang tight in there. Uh, be positive, have hope that this whole COVID situ situation, this global pandemic is going to get over soon. We all are in, in it together. I know that I haven't been uploading for uh, quite a long time now. I have been quite busy with school. Um, but today I'm back with another video. So today I'm basically sharing a drama performance that I did with my four friends. Um, so there's five um, all of us all together. We performed two plays, um, Skin and Liars. Both plays are published and written by Dennis Foon. They're very much beautifully written and many people could even relate, relate to it. I relate to, um, to the play Skin. Uh, Skin is a play that spreads awareness about racism, about how in the 20th century, teens experience racism in school, in workplace, and even in the community. And Liars, on the other hand, it spreads awareness about alcohol addiction. It tells you about what teens go through when they realize that a family member uh, is struggling from alcohol addiction. Thank you to Dennis Woon for giving us permission uh, to share this performance <laughs> on YouTube. And thank you to my friends and group members as well for allowing me to share our performance on YouTube as well. For privacy matters, I have blocked uh, two faces of my friends. Uh, because that's how they want to do and that's okay uh, we all have put um, much effort into this performance we hope you all like it if there's any feedback that you have on how we all five could dwell as actors please make sure uh, to drop that in the comment section down below we would really appreciate it uh, so let's just get right in the performance <laughs> I hope you enjoy in 2017, 16% of hate crimes were specifically targeted towards the black community. It took roughly 10 years of discussion for the provincial government of Ontario to finally establish an anti-racism directorate in 2016. There are over 900 active hate groups in the U.S. In Canada, black workers are twice as likely as Asian workers to be discriminated in major job decisions. In Toronto, black residents are 20 times more likely than a white resident to be shot dead by the police. Here are some facts about alcohol addiction. Long-term alcohol addiction can lead to severe liver damage, heart attacks, heart damage, increased chance of stroke, and high blood pressure. If one were to continue drinking after slight intoxication, it can cause blurred vision, slurred speech, impaired attention, slowed reflexes, and staggered movement. Alcohol can lead to a person committing suicide or taking part in violent crimes. Many people have also experienced abusive behavior while also under the influence. Many things influence how alcoholism affects you, including your age, body weight, how much food you consume, and how often you drink. Some may feel happy or excited, compared to others who may feel violent or depressed. Drinking too much can cause blackouts in which a person can act aggressively and hurt the loved ones without remembering a single thing about it afterwards. So in this performance, I'll be playing Lo, who is a short-tempered and tough Vietnamese immigrant who's trying to help out his friend. I'll also be playing Lenny's mother, who is an alcoholic. In this play, I will be playing Lo, who is a 16-year-old immigrant from Vietnam. I will also be playing Jason's dad. Jason's dad is a raging alcoholic and loves to pick at his son, Jace. Lastly, I will be playing the shopkeeper. They are, they are stereotypical and follows the stereotypical racist phrases. I play Tuan, Lenny, and the police officer. Tuan is really kind and has been through a lot. The police officer is extremely rude and racist, and Lenny is very caring and wants what's best for her mom. In this performance, I play Tuan and Jace. Tuan is a teenager refugee from Vietnam who moved to Canada with his sister, uh, younger sister while also losing his older brother on the way to Canada. He is dedicated to support his sister, and he 
is kind, nice, and he's always doing many things so that his dr dreams can come true. Jace is a 17-year-old 17 year, 17 year teenager who lives with his alcoholic dad, implying that he struggles at home with his dad while also experiencing bullying in school. So I play Tuan, Jennifer Malcolm, and Lenny's dad. Tuan is very kind and compassionate when it comes to his friends and family. He is also a immigrant from Vietnam. Jennifer Malcolm was born and raised in Canada, and she is currently facing racial discrimination because of her background. Lenny's dad is very indifferent, but he still tries to help his wife, who is an alcoholic. Skin by Dennis Spoon. Prologue. We have two arms, two legs, two feet, two ears, two eyes, one nose, one mouth, ten fingers, ten toes. I can taste. I can smell. I can see. I can hear. I can touch. Our blood is red. My blood is red. My blood is red. My blood is red. My blood is red. I breathe. I think. I feel. I feel. We all feel. Hey, leave me alone! Get out of here! Are you okay? No, I'm not. Those people attacked me for just walking down the hallway. I don't know them. Why did they do this? I don't understand the words they were calling me. I'm low. Are you new to this school? Yes. My name is Tuan, and I'm also a refugee from Vietnam. Thanks for helping me. I'm Vietnamese too. Came here a year ago. Well, why didn't you fight back? Or at least defend yourself against those guys? What's the point of fighting violence with violence? I've seen enough blood and death already. I lost my family to war. But it's a war here too! We don't speak English like them, so they give us a hard time. Lo, you are my first friend in Canada. And you speak my language, so you understand what I've gone through. This is not a war. Where are the bombs, explosives, and bodies on the ground? You can't call this a war. It's a war between us and them. Do you think they like you? Or accept you? We're so different that we scare them. I'm sure that not everybody in this school is like those guys. Yes, they are. Half of them give us a hard time and the other half let them do it. Not one new student can walk through that hallway. They all walk around the block so they can sneak in the back door. And the teachers don't see a thing. That's not true. It is. You've got to stick up for yourself. If I push you, you push me back. No, stop. I've been through tougher situations than this and fighting is not the answer. Those guys are going to make your life a misery. And don't come running to me when that happens. I know how to fight, Lo. But after all I've been through, I can't afford to, to get into trouble now. I have to find a part-time job and take care of my sister. She's the only family I've got. Then you've got to fight to survive. My whole family is depending on me to save them too. And I will. And fighting back is the only way. Take care, Tuan. Okay, Lo. See you around. Skin. Scene two. I tried to find work, cleaning office buildings late at night, but a week later, I was fired. My supervisor told me that the person who owned the building did not want immigrants working for him. I couldn't understand this, but my supervisor helped me find another cleaning job. One day, Late at night, Lo came by to see me at work. Hey, Tuan, I need to talk to you. Lo? This is a surprise. 
It's late. What are you doing here? I came here to say goodbye because I'm going back home. What? Back to Vietnam? After all you went through to come to Canada? Why? I thought my life here would be different. It is different. We are free here. Well, I am not free. Look, my parents wrote me this letter and they think I'm happy and I'm a big success. They don't know that I spent all day looking for jobs because no one would hire me since I don't speak English. They want to fire and live in my five-bedroom house. You told them you have a five-bedroom house? Yes, I lied because I didn't want to disappoint them. My room here is worse than anything I've got in Vietnam and I can't deal with this anymore. I have to leave. Listen, please don't give up. I'll help you. Thanks, Tuan. You've been a really good friend and I'm really going to miss you. That was the last time I saw Lo because I never heard from him again. Sometimes late at night, when I'm mopping floors, I stop and listen. The empty building is silent. Outside, the rain beats against the windows. I feel like I'm underwater. I think about my older brother, who fell off our boat on the way to Canada. I feel that he's watching me work. He, I feel, he looks at me, grabs the mop from my hand, shouting, You're my little brother. Why are you working when you should be sleeping? Give that mop to me. That is my job. I look at him and his hair is still wet. And I want to say, did you swim? I thought you drowned. How did you find me here in Canada, in this city, in this building right now? Suddenly, he fades away and the hall is empty. No sound but the hum of lights and the rain beating against the windows. I know my life is really hard right now, but I have to keep going. I can't afford to lose hope for a better life. I have to do it for my brother so that his death was not in vain. Skin, scene three. My name is Jennifer Malcolm. My dad's an engineer and comes from Jamaica. My mom's from Trinidad and she works in a bookstore. I was born in Toronto, Ontario, and I love rock music. One day, I was in the store near school, and I was shopping around, when a police officer came in and talked to the shopkeeper. Then, as I tried to walk out of the store... Officer, stop that girl. I think she stole something. Hey, I didn't steal anything. Every time you people come in my store, you leave with half the things on my shelves. Get over here and open up your purse. Now! But I just said that... I said open it up. See? I don't have anything. Listen, don't get smart with me. You people are always causing trouble. And if I find you here again, I'll, you I'll have you behind bars so fast, you won't even know what hit you. What did you just say? I want your number because I'm going to report you. Try it. You want to see harassment? Just cross this line once, lady, and you'll get it. I know how to deal with your kind. Now get out and don't come back. This is Canada. But this incident really happened. I know most police aren't like that guy. But some are. And how many people are too? I started thinking about all the times I've been bugged in stores. Can I help you? Can I help you? They all thought I was shoplifting. And the time our neighbors asked us a million questions about how we were able to afford a new car. I wonder if they thought we stole it. And walking down the street, the names some people call me. Where do they learn that stuff? I didn't teach it to them. Who did? Liars. No. Scene one. <laughs> Hey, Dad. How's it going? Jeez! What do you do with my screwdriver? <laughs> Nothing. I didn't see it. Did you look in the toolbox? <laughs> of course I looked in the toolbox, you fool. Where else would I look? I don't know. I didn't touch it. That's where it usually is. 
Don't just stand there. Get me another beer right now. Oh, God. Here it is. Good work, son. There's two things a guy gotta have. His beer and his screwdriver. Oh, here it is. In the toolbox. Like I said, it was. Dad, I'm gonna ask you a favor. Can I borrow the car Saturday night? No problem, since I'm not using it. Where are you going? I got a day with Lenny. Hey, I think you like this girl. <laughs> Dad, she's a good friend who's going through a hard time. Hey, where's my screwdriver? You just had it. What are you talking about? Where did you put it? I didn't take it. You always do this when you drink too much. You don't think straight. Hey, watch your mouth. Last time, you took my razor. I was five years old and I didn't know what I was doing. You never know what you're doing. How am I supposed to shave without my razor? I got my own razor. I don't need yours. You stay out of my stuff. As if I don't do enough for you already, you take everything from me. Last time, I didn't get that job because I couldn't find my razor. How am I supposed to find work when you're always stealing my stuff? Stop blaming me for everything. Get out. Get out. No problem, you crazy drunk. <laughs> what did you just call me? You heard me. I'm leaving. Get out and never let me see your face again. You never will. Goodbye, Dad. Liars. Scene two. Dad, can I talk to you? Sure, honey. What is it? I want to talk about mom. I'm really worried about her and I think she needs help. We are all trying to help her. She is suffering and her life has been filled with tragedy. I know, Dad, but she's an alcoholic and you seem to ignore that. Listen, Lenore, I'm under tremendous pressure at work and I can't deal with this right now. I really don't feel well. I think I'm just going to lie down for a while. Hi, honey. You're home early. Where's your father? He went to lie down. Has a migraine. Mom, I came home early because I wanted to talk to you. You can always talk to me. Did you fight with Jace? How was your day? I don't want to talk about Jace or my day. I want to talk about you. Me? What about me? You're drinking. What drinking? What drinking? You drink all the time and fight with dad every night. Are you calling me a drunk? What's your problem? You mom, you have a problem. I'm worried sick about you. You keep getting worse and the drinking never stops. You are exaggerating. I don't have a problem. Most adults drink. It is a socially acceptable way to entertain, to relax. You are drunk every day. Alcohol controls your life. It's killing you and I don't want you to die. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. I'm not going to die. I know how much I drink. I regulate it and I'm in complete control. Mom, stop lying to yourself. Lenore, what is your problem? I think you're being paranoid. No, I'm not. I know what I live with. You have every symptom of an alcoholic. You need help. We all need help. Has that boy put you up to this? Look at me. Have you been doing drugs with Jace and gossiping about your mother? What is happening to you? This has nothing to do with Jace. He's the only person I can talk to about this because he's going through the same problem. This is not about me. It's you. What is this commotion about? I was trying to rest. We were having a little chat. Dad, please. This has gone too far. We've got to get some help. For mom. 
for all of us. Honey, it's late, and I'm exhausted. Not too late to be spreading lies about her mother. She went out with that drug addict, and who knows what they've been up to. Dad, this is nonsense. This is about Mom's drinking. We talked about this. She's never talked to me like this before. It's definitely that boy, Jace. This conversation is over. Go to bed. I'm not going to bed till we do something about Mom's problem. I don't want you ever seeing that Jace again. If you so much as talk to him, you're grounded. For good. Lenore, please just listen to your mother. Why won't you listen to me? Mom? Dad? Please! Go to bed! Scene. In conclusion, there are several organizations that help those who are experiencing racism and alcohol addiction. The Black, Black Lives Matter Toronto helps spread awareness about hate to racism faced towards the Black community. The Black Youth Helpline serves all youth and specifically responds to the need for a Black youth-specific service. Contact if help and support is needed. Follow at Toronto's Manifesto on Instagram to share stories, encourage, and show support for the Black Canadians and Indigenous communities. The Black Health Alliance is a, is a community-led, registered charity which works in the health and well-being of Black Canadians in Canada. The Canadian Anti-Racism Education and Research Society helps track and monitor hate group activity throughout Canada. This organization provides victim support for hate crimes and systemic racism. Connex Ontario <laughs> offers free help services for those experiencing drug or alcohol addictions. To get help, call 1-866-531-2600 where they will listen and provide support. Some treatment centers include Addiction Rehab Toronto and the Canadian Center for Addictions. Teen Addiction Help Phones are at 1-800-668-6868. If help is needed, call Wellness Together Canada at 1-866-535-0445. Call 911 if you see an individual with symptoms of alcohol poisoning as it can be fatal. Symptoms include clammy skin, low body temperature, and slow and labored breathing. Thank you for watching our performance. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching our performance. We really appreciate you doing this. Again, if you have any feedback for all five of us, five of us that could help us dwell with actors, please make sure to write that feedback in the comment section down below. We would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching uh, this performance again and supporting my uh, channel and liking this video. It means the world to me. Uh, I'll meet you in the next video. Till then, have a great day ahead and peace out.